What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn about the three standard data streams called standard input standard output and standard error and how to use them in python so let us get right into it All right, so we're going to talk about standard input, standard output, and standard error in this video today, the three standard streams, and we're going to learn how to use them in Python. Now, standard streams are nothing that is specific to Python or to any other programming language. This is something that happens on a system level, that exists on a system level, and we can use it in Python using the sys package, which is a core Python package that handles system related stuff. So all we have to do to access these standard streams is we have to import the sys package and we can then just say sys.std out sys.std in and sys.std error those are just communication channels that we can directly access through the sys module however you're accessing those if you're a python programmer all the time and you're not using them directly so for example whenever you do print something print hello world for example you are printing two standard outputs, so two std out. That is what's, happen, uh, what's happening by default, unless you specify a specific file. Unless you say, okay, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to print to std out. I want to print to std error or to a text file, for example. So by default, you're printing to std out. So we're going to open up a terminal here. If I run this code. This is what it looks like. And if I instead say sys.stdout.write and I say hello world, you're going to notice it's almost the same. There's just one little thing that's different. And this is that we don't have an automatic line break here. So this is basically the same as saying print uh, hello world and then saying that the end should be just an empty string and not a line break. Or we could also just say backslash end here, which would turn it into a print statement without this keyword argument. So those would be equivalent. Um, and those would also be equivalent. There you go. Um, so that's not too, too special or too interesting here, you can use that if you want to, for some reason, have this style of code, because you're using sys a lot, and you're using the different standard streams a lot, uh, or to have more manual control and to not use the Python print function for whatever reason. Now, there's also std error. So the error message standard output, you could say, uh, and we can easily just say sys dot std error dot write. And we can say this is an error. And I think that if you do this in the command line, you're not going to see any style difference here. So this is just an error message now. But the standard error and the standard output depends on the application. So you usually inherit this standard output, standard input, standard error from the parent application. And in PyCharm, this might be a different uh, file that we're writing to. And you can see that here the text is red. So if I say sys and std out, we're going to get, first of all, we're going to probably get some odd behavior. Um, actually, I didn't want to say this is an error. This is hello world. Uh, you're going to see some odd behavior. First of all, this is not too odd. The error is red and the rest is white. But the interesting thing is that you can see the error message here is printed before uh, the standard output message, even though it was printed actually, or it was written afterwards. This is something that seems to happen in PyCharm. This is not the case in the command line, at least when I tried this. Uh, or actually it is. It is okay. But it's not always the case. It's kind of random. So now you can see it's hello world. And this is an error. Uh, it seems to be unpredictable what happens here. So sometimes it's like this, sometimes it's like that. And this is just because of the way that these two files are handled. And when they're flushed and stuff like that, you can also flush them manually. Um, but that is how you write to std error, you can also write to std error by saying no surprise, print this is an error. And then you can specify the file to be sys.std error. And then you can see that this has the same effect. So that's not too interesting. We're going to take a look at an example um, with this in a second here. Um, and we're going to look at why it can make sense to flush uh, to, to flush certain uh, messages manually with a flush command. But first of all, I want to handle std in so we can also say std in and we can read from the standard input and we can print, for example, 
the result or instead of printing and you can store it in a variable, you can process it or something like that. But we're just going to print now whatever we get into SCD in. And you're going to see that this is not the same as calling the input function. So we also have this here, maybe I show this first. So maybe before doing this, I'm just going to show you what happens when we call the input function, which you probably already know. Then I can just enter something. And when I press enter, it's processed and it's printed because again, we print this, right? This is not what happens when we use SCD in dot read. Because now I can type something, I can press enter, I can continue typing, I can press enter a couple of times. And you can see what happens here. Uh, now to terminate this to say this is now the end of file, I would have to press control D to basically say this is the end of the file. And then even though it was not easily recognizable. Now, this basically printed uh, the whole thing again, or did it? Did it do that? Where does the message start? It's here. Uh, let me just try another one. Test, test, and then control D. Yeah, there you go. It prints the message that uh, we entered. And the good thing about std in is it can also process something um, from a file, we can pipe stuff into the standard input, or we can forward stuff into the standard input. So for example, on Linux, at least I think this also works in a similar way on Windows, I can go ahead and I can create a new file, new file.txt. I can put some stuff in here. Hello world. This is the content of the file. multiple lines are present, and something like that, right. So I have this file now and I can say Python three main.py and I can use these angle bracket or this angle bracket here to feed in the new file txt into um, into this program. And you can see that this also works. We can also do the same thing with piping. So I can actually say, um, new file txt and then pipe and or actually, I think I need to say cat new file txt and then pipe uh, to get the output, I can also pipe the ls command. So this is the ls output, I can also say ls pipe, Python three, main py. And then you can see that this is also printed. Um, this doesn't work with input, I can go ahead and I can do the same thing with input, it's only going to parse a single line. So if I do something like this, you're only going to get the first line and nothing else. Also with LS, it's going to only print the first line. So this is why you might want to use std in. Now I wanted to show you an example of flushing and why it may make sense to use flushing manually. Um, let's define a function here, let's call it progress bar. And let's say total is a parameter. And then we're going to say sys dot std out uh, dot write. And we're going to start with a simple uh, square bracket opening square bracket, then I'm going to say for I in range, and we're going to have total here. I'm going to say and for this, I need to import time so that we have a slow animation time dot sleep 0.1 seconds, just so we have some artificial delay. And then we're going to just write here a hashtag to fill the progress bar. Um, and then we're going to say in the end, sys.std out dot right, we're going to close the square bracket again. Um, let's use double quotations everywhere. Actually, I like single quotations more, but let's keep it consistent. Um, and let's say this is my function, I now call it print progress bar 50, for example. And now we're going to the terminal and I run this without any input. There you go. So I can see nothing here. Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. And then boom, I have the full progress bar. And actually, this should be a square bracket, not a curly bracket. Uh, but you can see that there was no animation, there was nothing and then there was everything. Now, if I add here sys.sd out dot flush, I'm force flushing the output. And you can see that I get this animation here. 
So this is what flushing is for. And this is why it makes sense. And I can do the same thing with the print statement. So I can go ahead and I can say print. And I can say just opening square bracket and the end is going to be uh, nothing so that I don't have a line break. And here I'm going to do also print. And I'm going to say uh, print the hashtag symbol. The end is again an empty string. Um, and then I can here again say print closing bracket and is an empty string. And now when I run this or actually this is in PyCharm. So in PyCharm, we have a different behavior because PyCharm for some reason flushes every time. Uh, but you can see in the command line again, nothing. And if I go ahead and I say here flush equals true, then I will have the same behavior as you can see. Now in PyCharm, I already have this behavior by default, so I don't have to flush because the way this terminal or console works for some reason already flushes it um, automatically. So I don't need to flush. So here we don't have any change, I think, if I set this to true. Uh, but yeah, this is just a PyCharm console. In the terminal, you need to do flush to see the animation. So yeah, this is how you use the standard streams. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.